have a question to dig into query optimization. So question is, can we have an in-depth video on query optimization? I've looked at Microsoft documentation to try and understand what some of the symbols are in the query execution plan, what they mean. There wasn't much information. So yeah, we'll dig into this. Uh, I'll show you not only like the query optimizer, but a couple of other things that I typically use when I'm tuning queries. So if you go into SSMS and there's a query menu under there, if you select include actual execution plan, SSMS will have a tab that comes up and we're going to dig into this in detail, but you have a tab that comes up and it'll show you the actual execution plan that, that SQL Server is going to use to satisfy the query. A couple of other things I like to do is set statistics IO on, and I actually have a entire video on set statistics IO on, and that'll tell you the exact amount of IO that is being used to service the query on each table involved in the query. And another thing I like to look at are table metrics. So you use, there's a store procedure SP space used, and you give it a table name, and it'll tell you the actual amount of IO going on in each table in the query. Okay, let's switch over to SSMS. So like I said, you go to the query menu and this is the option, include actual execution plan. I already have it enabled, so I'm not gonna toggle that. And then the other thing we're gonna do is enable statistics IO, which is just done with that command. And for SP space use, so what I've got here is a query, it's hitting the AdventureWorks DW 2019 database. I'm hitting the fact finance table and the dim date table. So let's grab the metrics on those tables. So this tells you the number of rows in the table, data and index uh, pages, and reserve space. So I like to get this information out. And just copy it so I can take a look at everything. So we're going to put it up here. And let's do the same thing for the dim date table. Well, these tables aren't that big, but it gives you an idea. So we've got 39,000 rows roughly in fact finance and 3,600 rows in dim date. Now we've got a query here and it's going to go and get the maxed, the max date alternate key, which is just the date that's sitting in the date dimension table. So it's going to the, to the fact table and joining the dim date. And it's trying to find out what's the most, most recent date. And that's saying that, uh, two, 2013, 1228 is the, is the maximum date. And now we'll look at the statistics IO, which appears in the messages tab. And it's telling us, so it's got a couple of work tables and it's saying, oh, well, it's going in and reading 239 pages from fact finance. And then it's going to dim date and it's got eight, eight reads from that table. So let's switch over to the execution plan tab. So what you can see here is that it's doing an index scan on the dim date table, and it's scanning basically every row in that index structure, 3,652 out of 3,652. And the relative cost of this portion of the query is 2%. And then it's doing a table scan on fact finance. And this relative cost is 42%. And again, this one's scanning every row of the table, all 39,409 rows. And then when it joins, it's got a cost of, a relative cost of 51% to do that join between those two tables. And then it's doing a stream aggregate. That's how it's rolling everything up and giving you your, your max date. But something else I want to point out here is that it's actually telling us that there's a missing index. So we can get the details of this just by right clicking and getting the missing index details. And it's saying that in fact finance, we can create an index on the date key. 
and I guess the other thing I wanted to point out here is that this is 92. The, the relative impact here is really high. It's like 92%. So let's create that index. I'm just going to uncomment this. Before, before we do that, let's just capture the IO. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to paste it here. And then we're going to go back. We're going to give the index a name. So I'm just going to give it IX1 X Finance. And we'll create the index. That's done. We're going to go back. And let's rerun the query. So same answer. We go to the Messages tab. You notice that the work tables are gone. And the logical read for each table here is quite a bit different. So let's just paste it down so we can take a look at the differences. Make that a little bigger. So again, no work tables at all. We've got logical reads was 239 from Fact Finance and has been reduced to 90. So that's more than a two-fold factor, two and a half times less work. And logical reads actually went up a little bit in dim date. So we're probably going to have a different plan here. But overall, if you add this up, 239 plus 8, you're about two, you know, just under 250 versus 90 plus 53, so you're under 150. So that's a pretty good decrease in work. And that's what you're trying to do when you're tuning is decrease the amount of work that the database has to do. Now let's take a look at the plan again. So as you can see, it's using that index that we created. And the cost here, the relative cost is 39% of using, using that index. And relative cost of the clustered index scan on dim date is 17%. And then where merge join is 35% of the overall and then 8% to do the aggregation. So the index is uh, basically a keeper. We want to keep something like that and reduce the amount of work. So we're going to do another query here. But before we do this query, let's just uh, let's drop that query, that index that we created. And now this index, again, it's joining the same two tables. But now it's uh, it's trying to get the number of rows by date, trying to figure out how many rows we have. So this table looks like it's being populated monthly. And we've got three, 33 rows in December 2013. So it looks like it didn't get fully populated. But then after that, it looks like most of the time it averages about 1,100 and some rows. We go to the Messages tab to get the I.O. information looks very similar to that other query we had. So I'm guessing that the plan that we're going to look at is pretty much the same. And yep, there it is. It's doing a table scan of fact finance. It was using It's using the AK dim date index. Relative cost here is 2%. Relative cost of the table scan is 46%. And then we've got this hash match aggregate and then a scalar. So a lot of these I don't really make much of, to be honest. What what I usually look for is what indexes are being used. Does it make sense? Uh, what's the relative cost? And trying to you know basically match up. Hey, I'm getting like X number of rows back, and if there's if there's an aggregation, I need to factor that in. But if I'm only getting a few rows back and I'm scanning the whole table, there's probably a better way to get at that information. And of course, we're looking at the amount of work that we're doing. That's why I like to use both of these two together. And then cross-reference cross that information with, hey, how many rows are in the table? So let's just summarize. Uh, you want to use Statistics I.O. in conjunction with query plans. You also want to profile your data and understand the numbers, understand the number of rows you have in, in the tables and the queries so that you, you can make sense of everything that's going on. And you want to try and minimize I.O. 
And if you minimize IO, you're going to make less work for the database. And you're also going to make more effective use of your cache. Because when, whenever you pull data in, whenever you're scanning indexes, that all that information needs to be pulled into your cache first before it gets read. So if you're pulling all that information in, you've got limited cache. That means that you're pushing other information out of your cache. You want to have the highest page life expectancy as possible in your, in your SQL Server instances. And lastly, look for index recommendations and see if they make sense. You know, actually test them out. Not every index recommendation is, is, ha, has to be implemented, but many of them do as from my experience. So that's it for today. I hope uh, that, that answers your question and gives you a better idea. If you have more specific questions, please send them. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please like it, subscribe, comment, and send more questions. Have a good day.